Hi, I'm Mitch Lyons. Welcome to my studio. I'm going to show you how to make a clay model print. As far as I know, no one's ever printed from clay. To get a lithograph, you use a stone with ink. To get a wood cut, you cut into the wood, the surface, and you ink it and pull a print. For an etching, you cut into the metal plate and ink it and pull a print. Linoleum is the same way. You take linoleum, carve into it, and ink it and pull a print. In this case, we are actually going to roll out a slab of clay and use colored clay to make prints. This is the first time that anyone's ever printed using colored clay and not ink. I try to walk in my studio and empty my mind because every artist, in fact, every person knows how to make green. You know, you mix yellow and blue together. And what that means is that it becomes a memory and it diminishes your experience of ever doing that again. Now, that's my goal. Of course, it's impossible to <laughs> you know, empty your mind completely, but I try to do the best I can. We both work from home, so we were together 24 hours a day. But our very special time was first thing in the morning where we'd sit and drink coffee and talk to each other probably for well over an hour each morning. And Mitch would tell me lots of stories, many of them very funny. And sometimes I would even have him repeat them just so I could see him laughing over and over again about what had happened. His sense of humor was just outstanding. He had um, he'd come up with some real zingers at times. People just gravitated to Mitch because of, of, uh, of what he was doing, his wonderful work, and, and how he was, was blazing the uh, make it, sell it, or teach it kind of uh, approach to his work. Um, I think that's a, that's a nice uh, piece to remember about Mitch's journey. He worked in his studio daily. That was his job. That was his conscious choice to be a full-time studio artist and to make a living at that to support his family of five. Mitch produced hand-built vessels in all sorts of shapes and sizes. He experimented with feet, with spouts, with handles. Sometimes he did figures. He, uh, again, was interested in the process. Uh, some of his vessels were whimsical while others were abstract. The whimsical pieces may have had musicians marching around playing instruments or it may have been a man with a dog anything most of them had a story His well i remember when i was a student noticing that every culture that we studied often had narrative images on their pots i mean well, if you think about it the mayans the greeks the romans the africans Australians, they all had images and narration on their pots. So I, I feel like I'm continuing that celebration. So I taught high school for a couple of years and then resigned and went back to graduate school in ceramics at Tyler School of Art, which is part of Temple University. And it was there in 1968 that I began combining printmaking with clay. And take the heel of your hand and just spread it out. Mitch was truly an inventor within the ceramic and also the printmaking world. Within those realms, he really started off in his undergraduate career as a printmaker, graphic designer, but through his own personal curiosity and interest as an undergraduate, he taught himself how to turn pots on the wheel, which led to his graduate study in ceramics. As a ceramic artist, as he made that tradition, he found that he really did not enjoy the glazing process, which was somewhat atypical of that time period uh, within the ceramic studio. Because of that, he got involved with the colored clay process, 
by using colored clays as a source of decoration, coloration for his pots. And again, this evolved into the inlay of the colored clays into his slab pots. Now, After your slab becomes leather hard, then you want to coat it with white slip. Liquid clay is called slip. What you're looking for is a heavy cream consistency. And then start painting your slip on your leather hard slab of clay. And began uh, in 71 to really develop it. And by 1980, I stopped making pots and developed the uh, clay printing uh, idea and marketed it. And, uh, and then in 1995, I went back to making pots. Now, Mitch, through this process, developed what's called the broomstick method, where he would create from a cylinder of clay a thin slab by introducing a larger and larger dowel and expanding the clay. Through that process, he would also do his colored inlay techniques. Eventually, he found that rolling these slabs on newsprint, the colored clay would transfer as an image. Through that, again, we go back to Mitch as an inventor. Here he saw this as a technique in a way to merge into the colored clay printmaking process. He found that working, and again being that inventor, working from newsprint to rice paper to eventually uh, a pelon or a reme, he developed and designed what is now his clay printing, monoprinting technique. You must use the slip with the pigments. So. Once you get the pigment mixed with water, then take your slip and mix it in with the pigment. The more pigment you use in proportion to the slip, the more intense the color. So you can take your colored slip now and with a nice wide brush, start applying color directly on the slab. All colors work together. The ugliest color, yeah, there, I don't have any sensitivity toward color in a sense. I don't have favorite colors. I don't have any colors that I don't like. Color is just a process. And if you take the slip, colored slip, and paint it directly in a newsprint, the newsprint starts to dry out the slip. And once the water is evaporated out of the slip, then you can inlay it. Place the stencil on the slab. And I use a screen. This is a regular kitchen screen. And remember the pastel that we made? Well, this is how I use them. I take the pastel and I screen it down onto the slab. And you can use two or three or four colors. These are all pastels that we made with colored clay. Mitch influenced me with his untraditional and unconventional pottery tools and made me realize that I didn't need to buy all my tools at the pottery store. And then you can take some of your tools and make marks in the slab, or you can remove some color. This is uh, some rope. So that can be used as a stencil. Don't forget to spritz it a little bit with water to set it. 
and then gently remove your stencil. Mitch was one of my ceramics professors at Westchester University in the mid-1990s. I remember him telling us about the tough road an artist has lying ahead, and he didn't candy coat anything, and he lived the artist's life. He knew it would be hard for us, and I often look back with my struggling years as a young artist and thought, these are the years that Mitch was talking about. Over the years, Mish struggled with the notion that his um, that he had given the name print, clay print, to his uh, his work. Um, I think that he just felt this need to have his work considered to be truly original, and this notion of of, of print just bothered him. Mitch really struggled with his feelings of being accepted in the clay community and the printmaking community. He was an anomaly. He had one foot in the clay world and one in the printmaking world. As one of his students just said to me recently, he baffled potters and printmakers alike with his work. What would he like uh, people to better understand about his work? And he replied that he wished that people, and in particular artists, we're more accepting of new ideas. So you see there are many, many, many ways of developing a dialogue. Color on top of color on top of color. It's uh, a history of the marks you make with the knife and the rake and all sorts of things. And you're developing a um, program of color or pound color. And you'll see when I pull a print that it's going to pull some of that color off onto the paper. Now we're ready to pull a print. Make sure everything is on one level and the clay is nice and leather hard, not sticky or not wet. And you can do that by taking your hand and touching. If it doesn't pull any clay off, then you're ready. Put a nice thin layer of water on the surface. And I do that with a spritzer. Not a lot of water. Remember, it's the water that begins to soften the slip because there's no drying agents in the slip. That way, you're able to pull it off onto your substrate. As a teacher in 1973, um, Mitch and I were both, I would consider, youngsters at the time. But he was very, very involved with the teaching process. He wanted everyone to really find their own self-expression, their own artistic voice, if you will. My favorite memory of Mitch was in college and we were unloading a kiln down in the kiln room and I was a struggling young artist trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life and Mitch stopped what he was doing and said, Rhoda, the world doesn't need another pot. You have to make them want yours. And I have never forgotten that. When I'm in the studio working, I always think about that every time I create. I do my prints on interfacing material. This is a material that I purchase in a fabric store. It's called interfacing. This particular product is called Rime, and it's a very heavy interfacing. And what I'll do is I'll wet this a little bit and wet the slab a little bit, give it a second or two for the water again to soften the slip, and that begins to activate it so that you can pull it off onto the substrate. He was also wonderful with his students and creative approaches in getting them to achieve what they wanted. Um, there was one student at a workshop who could not get started because she did not know what color to begin with. So Mitch finally said, well, start with a color you hate. And I thought that was a brilliant way of approaching the pr uh, problem. And this takes a few minutes. Now what you do is you wet the interfacing, you wet the slab of clay, you place it gently on the slab, roll it lightly with the rolling pin, and then peel it halfway back. And you'll see that it's beginning to pull clay off the slab. What you need to do now is wet it again. And this is very important that you don't get it too wet. Light, light water. Both the interfacing and the slab. 
and give it a second or two again to soften the slip. Mitch was always available to anyone who called him if he had time. Uh, and he volunteered that all the time. Mitch was not only a mentor to me, but also a resource. Whenever I would find that I'd hit a creative block in the studio, I would always call Mitch and he would come by and we would sit and look at the work, not really to have critiques, but to just talk about art in general. The relationship. Well, I think it's finished. So very carefully pull it off. Once you remove it from the slab, it's almost impossible to get it back into registration. So make sure it's, it's what you want and pull it off the slab of clay. And that's the print. And I met this Mitch is. in December of 1978. A friend and I were about to open the gallery and we wanted a contemporary artist for our opening show. I knew Mitch's work, although I didn't know him personally. I um, found out that he was a neighbor of mine in New London, Pennsylvania, and decided to reach out and ask him if he would be our first exhibiting artist. Of course, he said yes. That was 40 years ago and the beginning of a long and lasting friendship, both professionally and personally. We've been selling Mitch's work and showing it in the gallery ever since. And my fondest memory of Mitch was after, we, after he shared with us that the Delaware Art Museum had decided to collect his work for the permanent collection. And to watch, just to know Mitch and to see the twinkle in his eye, to see the inner joy, the satisfaction of knowing that his long journey as an artist had been recognized by the Delaware Art Museum, his, the local museum, uh, was just an amazing accomplishment for him. It, it caused him to be very, very happy for such a hardworking man. And it was just my greatest joy to see Mitch achieve that success. The Delaware Art Museum's Distinguished Artist Series is a program that celebrates those artists who have impacted contemporary art in the greater Wilmington area. They've impacted that through their artistic practices, through their teaching, and through their continued support of this community and its institutions. Mitch Lyons is himself one of those distinguished artists. I am confident that Mitch's work will live on for generations to enjoy. They are timeless and endless, and it has been my deep pleasure to have met and known Mitch for all these years. After the clay print dries, it becomes extremely archival. For one reason is that you're actually pulling a thin layer of clay off mixed with the pigments. And China clay is very inert. But I think Plus Mitch it. achieved his greatest success at the Central Pennsylvania Festival of the Arts in, that's held in State College annually in July. And Mitch participated in that show for, I think, 23 years. But he achieved his greatest success there when he won the Best in Show Award in 1994, 1995, so he went back to back, and then in 1999 he won the Best in Show Award again. I was drawn to Mitch's entrepreneurialship as an artist. He's a, he was a, an artist genius, but he also was a marketing major. He was a serious artist and he did serious work. And every time I saw him, he was always very encouraging to me. Uh, Mitch was a man totally uh, committed to life and to, uh, to people and to the people around him. At his memorial service, uh, several of his lifelong friends were present and, and spoke. These friends were from uh, Girard College, which was a, a college for orphan boys. It was clear from the comments that, uh, that they made uh, at the memorial service that Mitch was totally tied to the college and to their uh, precepts. Gerard had a number of core values, core values, 
and Mitch was a, just an outstanding example of the uh, of a Girard student. Uh, the core values for Girard College were respect for others, taking responsibility, striving for excellence, showing integrity by honoring commitment, demonstrating self-discipline, and demonstrating compassion, compassion for others. Mitch was uh, what might be called a model Girard student. And in the studio, Mitch was engaged in endless questioning. He was constantly experimenting with his subject matter, the types of artist tools that he used, clay itself, and of course, the printmaking process. Mitch developed a technique that pushes our expectations and these strict notions of what is clay, what is ceramic, what is a print itself. Being at the forefront in that way isn't always easy and it's not always comfortable and sometimes that artist is alone. But Mitch was strong in his convictions and he was dedicated to his artistic practice. And that's a practice that has and will continue to influence generations of artists. Mitch's work pushes our expectations for what artistic innovation can truly be. When I was a student, undergraduate student, I saw a drawing and it was an anonymous drawing, probably done by a monk in the 14th century. And it was a black and white line drawing of a monk sitting by a tree fishing. And as you, and as you watched the fishing, the, the fishing line, it was a, it was a bamboo pole, fishing line went into the water. And you could see in the water very clearly and the fish were swimming around. But there was no hook. You know, and I thought to myself, boy, that's the oddest thing I ever saw. How could you fish without a hook? To me, that it was a process of fishing was important. The journey of fishing. I hope you've enjoyed this process of clay mono printing. I have enjoyed presenting it to you. It has given me infinite avenues of artistic expression. It's very different from all the other printing processes that I know. It's much more painterly. The only restriction is your imagination.